the, the president has been accused severally about bringing the Lagos. He almost turned the presidency into another Lagos uh, and making it a Lagos part one or Lagos part two. And uh, most people that have worked with him in the past. But l let my producer bring back some of the faces of those whom some Nigerians have identified as the major, the prominent faces in the uh, Tinubu cabinet and those whom they say maybe might be retained or not. Uh, but Mr. Buala, how powerful though would this would uh, a change of cabinet be for President Tinubu? Would it make any significant difference? And some of what Mr. Claude Johnson said about the politics that play out right. within the presidency. The, the good thing about uh, President Bola Tinubu is that he knows what he wants and he cannot be controlled. There are people you see, you say, okay, if they put one or two things together and bring it to him, he might be swayed by them. But if you, if you look at him and both historically and now, is that if, for example, he, he picks interest in you, no matter what he said against you, it will not move him. He's going to be driven by data that he has come you know, in contact with and then the decision he has formed on the basis of that. But you see, the choice of who the president works with or doesn't work with is that of the president, it is his prerogative. If you look at section five of the constitution, it is clear that the executive powers lies in him and he carries out those duties either by himself, vice president, ministers, or organs of government. It might be a good, uh, a valid argument that people will say there shouldn't be concentration of people from one place or the other. If you look at the people they call, uh, from what I'm hearing and reading, they call the Lagos boys. They are not necessarily indigenous of Lagos. They come from their various places around the country, including uh, Southeast and the North. But probably because they lived over this period of years in Lagos and have had worked with him in the past, probably have one link or the other. That is the assumption that he's placing the Lagos boy over and Lagos boys over and above others. The discretion is that of his. That is my thinking about it. But the most important thing is that there are key and would, you know bringing it back to the issue of uh, Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila is that. There are key positions in government that by their very nature, they are bodyguard type positions that you can never be You're seen right. as a good man for the whole of the period, you say, because the nature of that place is to take the bullet for the president. You are going to be making decisions on his behalf that he will otherwise not do. So those who do not fancy that decision will not be in your good books. Sometimes you are probably the, the reservoir or the depository of some of president's decision. The people whose decision favor them will be happy with you, but those ones that decision disfavor them will not be comfortable. All I'm saying in a nutshell is that whichever you turn it, governor or president, the constitution has empowered him to choose the people he will choose from across the country that he thinks will help him in achieving his mandate. Measurement, I think, should be competence and compatibility. You asked about the uh, ministers. I don't think there is anybody in Nigeria that is in doubt that there is a fundamental problem in the administration of ministries by some ministers because we now know there is a KPI and citizens can actually access it. City, they call it citizenship, uh, citizens tracking. You can actually go there and see the KPI of a ministry. And when you see that KPI, you also know what the minister has done. And on your own, you can gauge based on what has been said as the schedule for him and what he has done or not done and form the opinion that it may one or two things about his ministry might be impressive mm. but unfortunately he, he may have come but, to the